it's Chris and Gina here again. Uh, uh, we're going to show you our fence and columns, um, how we made them, some of the things we did. Uh, fence and columns are kind of a personal, you know, home haunter thing. Everybody's got their own take. There's hundreds of videos. Well, I don't know there's hundreds, but there's like a dozen or so really, really good ones on how to do this fencing, how to make uh, columns. So we thought we'd share with you the way that we do. And uh, hopefully give you some ideas and inspire you to... Uh, Make your own. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. And we hope you like it. Let's do this. So here is a front shot of uh, one of our entrance columns. It's our larger ones. Um, the uh, construction of it is basically just plywood. I just took four pieces of plywood and stapled them all together. And it was open on top and bottom. Then I capped them off with uh, two larger pieces of plywood. And the, uh, the bottom cap actually stuck out to where, after I had measured how thick the foam and the uh, trim piece that I put on would be. Um, then I just basically 45, uh, cut a miter on some wider wood and then shot it to the, the, to the plywood. I cut a hole in the bottom, like a four inch hole, so that I could throw my cord through. I would suggest doing one through the side because Gina and I have a heck of a time trying to get all our cords, you know, stuffed in there. And it's, it's kind of a funny sight, I'm sure, just leaning this thing and, and doing it. But uh, this is, a, what is this, like two inch foam? And we took a uh, uh, soldering iron and melted it, painted it. Um, when did we build these things? This was like 2010. Mm -hmm. I believe so it is pretty chipped up and old and, and ratty as far as the only improvements that we've done to it uh, I think just this last year I this was some decorative molding that I had left over from a job and it's pretty uncanny how it just fit into the existing square that we had made um, but what I did is is after I got all the sides nailed together I wanted to create that that edge that a lot of people use foam or to to do and I just took a sawzall and just hacked out like where areas that I that I wanted the holes and then I got this fake brick paneling that all of my other smaller columns are skinned with and I and I mounted them from the inside um, and then put like a piece of one by behind it just to give it some support but uh, and then I just took a, a grinder and just ground some of these edges down to make it look like it's just busted. And then Gina came in and painted with uh, black and kind of aged everything up. Uh, this is a, a foam top that, that I basically glued to the plywood cap and then carved. Um, this was just some plastic tubing that fit the inside. Um... Sorry, cat. Distraction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the uh, a tube that fit the inside um, diameter of the of the light fixture just perfectly. So I spray foamed uh, around that so that it would stay glued. The backside is a four foot work light, and we got the black light bulb from Home Depot. Um, I built this half inch uh, plywood box kind of to protect it and I had always had intentions of making like a, a plexiglass cover to go over to just to kind of protect it from the rain. We actually have never had any any issues. Uh, this little black piece of tin foil is something to kind of protect it from light drizzle. Uh, but um, <laughs> the, these straps right here, so our neighbors one year had a black light out in the front yard and they, they had their black light bulbs stolen overnight. So I was like, oh no, I don't want our stolen. So I just real quick taped up a piece of plumber strap and you know, it's definitely not like theft proof by any means, but I think it deters them if, if nothing else. Here's the inside. Um, you notice we got a little lock. Uh, the keys for them match the, on both sides. Uh, I cut some holes out so that the speaker that we set on the shelf in here, the sound can flow through and it, there's a vent right there. Um, this is the back side of what I was talking about earlier where we had cut a section of the um, plywood and then came back in the back and, and skinned it from the inside, the, uh, the brick paneling that, that we got from the hardware store. This uh, 
piece, just a couple pieces of one by is just there to give support to that outer corner edge of the brick paneling. But we did a piece there, and then right here, in the other columns, it's in different places, but basically the same. This piece of plywood right here is just a, a ledge that I that I have so that I can uh, screw a piece of plywood down that goes like this that I can set my speakers on. But you can see, like usually what we do is we'll run all of our cabling up through this hole. Some of it's LED transformers, um, kicking legs, speaker wire, you know, lightning machine stuff, whatever, whatever we need to stuff in here. Uh, it usually comes in and I'll have like four or five power strips all connected together looking like Griswold. But that is the inside. Up here is, a, uh, there's the plastic um, PVC or just a plastic tube that I stuck through and it goes up through the foam and sticks out and that's what the light plugs on top of and you can tighten the little screws down. But yeah, we just set the light on there, drop the cord down, plug everything in, uh, set up our speakers and uh, shut her up. It's kind of nice. Here is one of our small columns. Um, the construction of it is basically the same thing with our large one. I just took four pieces of plywood, nailed them together, and made a box that was hollow on the top and bottom. And then I skinned it with this quarter inch uh, fake brick uh, that I got. The top or the, the bottom is just mitered pieces of wood. You can see how over the years it's kind of swelled and I mean you can't really tell that kind of stuff at night when it's dark and there's lightning going off and stuff. The top is just uh, uh, strips that I, it's actually two strips, there's three quarter ply and then an outer layer of uh, three quarter pine or something. But um, I made these tops removable so that Gina and I could change it every year if we wanted to. These, these, um, what are these? Urns. Urns. Yeah, these urns we got from Home Depot, they were on sale. I think they were like $10 each, so they were really good. They, they're they like a like a resin or a fiberglass type of a thing. And I basically just drilled a hole through them and uh, used a 3 8 bolt and bolted them right to the half-inch plywood. What's nice about this is we actually, you'll notice the dirt in there, we'll actually buy plants uh, each year and just plant them in here. And I made them removable so that basically she, Gina could take them in the backyard and just set them and we could water them for the rest of the year so they could get bigger and bigger. But, uh, you know, it, we just get cheap, scary looking plants on sale. <laughs> the clearance um, ones that are half yeah. dead anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you also put a hole for drainage for the water. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. The, uh, the first year that we did this thing was filling up with water and... It, it was, I don't think we had plants in it at that time, but basically this thing just filled up with rainwater, and I just uh, drilled a couple holes down in here where you can't see for it to leak out. Um, here's an inside shot, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Basically, this is just the three-quarter ply box, and then another layer of three-quarter to just give it uh, some depth, and then I mitered the top. But... Um, you know, one suggestion I would have, there's, uh, there's guys that have put speakers in here. Uh, I know uh, some people have put lights. That I've definitely incorporated design of a cubby or a box so that you can install like a, a work light or uh, some kind of lights for your lightning or speakers for your sound. It's really, really a great idea. So here's our fence section that connects to our large column. I wanted to show you guys a couple things. Uh, like a lot of fence that you see, it is basically your, uh, we used plywood instead of one by, but uh, we drilled all of our holes. You've got the half inch PVC, uh, the three inch or four inch circles. Um, but on the incline part and the, the, on the top and the bottom section, we had to use, uh, I just basically took the three quarter inch plywood and nailed it together and then cut the angle that I wanted to create. So that that's actually flipped and then I just used a white crown staple to shoot the, the top and bottom. These these little skulls, we uh, we got these at the dollar store, right? Dime store. Yeah, and um, we basically just have to touch them up every year. I think, what were they, like little votives? Or? They're little treat, um, 
carriers. So they're little like baskets or something. Whoa. Or buckets, but they're like they miniature hold, versions. They hold a lot of candy. They hold one fun-sized <laughs> candy bar. As far as all of our fencing connecting to the the columns, we use these eighth-inch steel brackets that we got from a metal supply store. Home Depot might have them, but uh, we use uh, three-eighths hardware. The bottom we use the uh, just a through bolt, but basically this just plugs in. I cut a little chunk out of the foam so that we can slide in but you just put your three inch bolts in there with a nut and washer the top because the circles because these circles are in my way I use a lag bolt from the underside but once you tighten those this thing really doesn't go anywhere so oh, here is a section of our fence you'll notice that it is four feet we wanted to keep it short and, and basically make them four foot instead of eight foot just so it's easier for us to store. Um, the, uh, the pieces go together by this little six inch, um, I think it's six inch long, three quarter wide angle, uh, it's aluminum. I just drilled four holes and uh, this is actually the back side so that nobody from the outside can see them. So that works out really nice, it's strong. And then on these fence panels, and some people have shot staples. Uh, since this is plywood, it's, uh, it, it is a little more stronger and durable. So I, I basically, I used, uh, what are these, like tech, they're like self-tapping drywall screws and uh, went through the backside on top and bottom and it's pretty strong. Each one of these circles, it, it seems like it's loose, but what I did was I, I screwed a screw in just through the top. And um, it's good enough. It's not glued. And what's kind of nice about it is if you wanted to kind of, you know, like turn them and make them look like they're a little bent up or whatever, uh, you have the freedom to do that. But um, that is that. Oh, these skulls. I want to show one more thing on, the, on these skulls. They are attached by, with a screw inside there. And what I did is, since the PVC is hollow, I went to the store, uh, to a Home Depot, and I found some wood dowel that fits that just perfect. And I just basically cut a bunch of little pieces, liquid nailed them in place, and then uh, took these little plastic skulls and just screwed right down into the dowel. It worked great. Here's our arch. It's way too tall to stand up in our house, so it. Sorry for it being sideways, but I did want to show you guys this. Um, one year we got this decorative uh, archway, and it's like a it's like one that you'd see like in a garden center or something. Like where's a place that you'd find this? Like just some kind of decorative party rental type of a type of a store. And it basically comes to about right here, and uh, it was just this one singular arch. These little pipe pieces weren't here. And it was just this nice wrought iron decorative thing, and we thought it would be perfect for our uh, for our archway. We then, when we wanted to name it our mishap manor, I needed that some kind of way to to mount my lettering, so I added this plywood section, and this is just a, a plywood strip that I cut out with a jigsaw. Um, I took the letters off this last year because we were going to put cemetery, and we just ran out of time, so we didn't get to do it this year. But the, uh, the skull, it was like a dollar store skull. It's got a red uh, uh, gel inside there and then an LED light behind it. And it works out great. I think it had, the LED had three lights and I just electrical taped the center light. Um, these, the very first year we used this, we put these just these little tiny flicker lights on there. I ended up taking them off uh, because I wanted to mount our skeleton and stuff. I just haven't cut these off. I actually use it to, it, it works really good because I hook the uh, the skeleton up here through that, that hole in the pelvis bone and it kind of locks them in there and makes them sturdy. Um, these legs, I just, uh, I think they're one inch uh, square tubing and it just slides right on and this is where, uh, there's a couple holes drilled and they j I just screw, screw it into the large columns through, through that way. All these, <laughs> all these cables and things uh, are basically to get the power 
and speaker wires and LED wires and everything from one column to the other through the arch so that uh, it's out of the pathway for the trick-or-treaters. Here's just one side of the gate. It's actually loose, but it did the, it's got hinges, and I just tech screw them on, and uh, and that is the the gate. I mean, I don't know. Am I, am I forgetting anything? I think you're good. Awesome. Was that blue steel? <laughs> hey. Chris and Gina here, and we thought we would show you how to tan hunter style. Well, you thought you'd show them. I'm just filming. You look like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I'm sorry, that's the only thing I could think of. How bad can it be? Um, I think we're good. Now you can get to the real informational part because I think... <laughs> You glow, these, girl. These, these are my recreational clothes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>